It's take me about an hour to get myself out of here. Can you get out of the way? But guess what? The winch stopped working halfway through. We can't get through there. So I made a bit of a dumb rookie mistake. Favourite on the road snap. So we're going into some fairly remote areas now. We've left uh, Arkaboola and we're heading up to Mount Hopeless towards Inaminka. Now there's nothing for the next 430 kilometres. So we're on our way. So what's the plan? Well, we can't get through there, that's for sure. We're gonna go overland. There's a bit of a muddy creek there that'll be a real challenge to get through, but let's give it a go. Seem to get the diff locks in. Yeah, Alright. So we made a big mistake here. We can't get through there. So I made a bit of a dumb rookie mistake. I thought I'd go across the paddock here. It's take me about an hour to get myself out of here. And it was a dumb mistake because I walked that and it looked good try and get around this bog hole in front of us and now we're going to try the bog hole so that was a waste of time and a stupid mistake but you know it just shows you we all make silly mistakes it seemed solid as a rock when I walked it then I fell into a big hole Putting the max tracks on now. It's not deep and very, it's just very soft, but there's not too far to go to hit this dry road. So, just see what the plan is. It's got his helper there giving him instructions. There, dear. <laughs> ah, well, have a look at that. It's just bogging Take number us, one. What, an hour and a half to get through here? At least. Oh, I'm going to need a shovel to get that one out.
So he got it exactly where we got to. Yeah, we're gonna have to give him a hand. Look at the mud in this car. <laughs> My beautiful Ineos Grenadier. Okay, so we've pulled up for lunch. It's about half past two. I don't know how far we've got. Not that far, but a lot of water over the road. A lot of water of the road, but here we are. Hey, Pop, you had fun? Yeah. <laughs> I was making some lunch. You can see state of affairs back here. But uh, we got through most of it. Our friends in the uh, Toyota seemed to be a long way behind. I hope they didn't get stopped in that mud. <laughs> Favourite on the road snack. Saladas, strays, cheese and chutney. Can't beat it. It's hot. Hot, I hear. 
How's that for lunch? Good. You like the outback? Yeah. What about going through that water and getting bogged? Fun? It was, it was fun. So we're heading for Mount Hopeless now, uh, and we're going to turn on to get onto the Strezlecki track there. Had a bit of a, an adventure on the way uh, through all that water. But uh, we're going to a ball where hopefully we can have a swim, clean up. Get any better? Oh, okay. Okay, we've got a bit of a problem here. We've got a bit of a problem here. Trying to get around this water. So we struck a spot here where we doesn't look like we can get through, so we're trying to find a way around. So we're just trying to find a tr track around here now. I don't think we're going to have much luck here to be honest. Getting around. Flat tyre in the middle of the bush, detouring around completely. Oh, look at this completely flooded road. And to discover that my rim is completely stuffed. Okay, look okay, out. Makes me not very happy, but having fun. Looks like a new mag wheel for the Grenadier. Maybe I should have got those steelies after all. Okay, here's the situation now. We've come along this track, we've been going all day. Fortunately we met up with another couple there in the Toyota. We've pulled them out a couple of times. They'd helped us as well. Uh, I've done a, um, 
I've done a, a tyre and a rim, I've wrecked the rim as well, so I don't have any spares, I can't get another spare to the way home, but the worst part is now we're confronting this, and I think we're stuck, I don't think there's any way through here, uh, McKay who is one of the, uh, is the guy from the other vehicle, is taking a long walk around right out the back there to see whether we can go across the paddocks there and get around the water but it's not like that it's 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 like this in all the paddocks to as far as you can see both sides of the road and the road's about two foot deep there and just the water's running through as you can see it's just running through like a river and it's just slush there's no way we would get through there and there's no way we would get through these paddocks in fact if we were silly enough to go into those areas I reckon it would be a major <laughs> major recovery so at this stage here we are and as you can see fairly desolate location not a lot around here we're a bit fortunate we've got another vehicle with us now uh, my winch is not working so I'm not sure why the winch is not working whether it's operator error or not but uh, I just started to work and then just stopped so maybe it's a fuse don't know but of course if you want to look in the manual to see what how to operate the winch zilch it's most frustrating so uh, that's where we are at the moment looks like we might be camping here tonight and then uh, perhaps retracking the trouble is it was quite difficult to get to this stage through a lot of the water puddles um, McKay and Angelique in the other vehicle got uh, got bogged a couple of times we managed to get around it or get through it although I did get bogged once and uh, got myself out with the max tracks but this is not what we'd hoped for we're stranded at the moment okay so this is the deal we're stuck we can't get through We've tried every possible option, this road should be closed, and it's not. We're turning around, it's 20 to 7, but we're going to try and get as far back towards Arkarula in daylight. The road should be closed, it's completely impassable. It's been difficult enough to get here, but we've got through, but now it is just impassable. So we've had to turn around and go all the way back. We're travelling with another couple, luckily because we're going to need each other to get in and out of some of these spots. Okay, I'm just going to stop the video there for a minute just to talk about what happened here. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not really exactly sure what happened. So we just come back onto the road uh, from detouring around that same uh, large pool of water we uh, detoured around early in the day. So we're back on the road and I travelled maybe 30 metres and I just started to accelerate when I felt like bang and I said to I said to Mara I said oh I've hit something I've hit, hit something because the car stopped we didn't hit, feel any violent action of the van or anything like that we just like whoop, suddenly the start the car stopped and then looked out and we saw that the van was completely upside down now I later discovered when I was paddling around out there that there was a large crevice in the road the large washout under all of that mud that I obviously hadn't seen and I think that well what has happened is that the van has gone down into that crevice somehow and somehow flipped itself completely over onto its back now I think my speed at that stage would have been maybe 20 kilometers an hour if that maybe 25 but I was starting to accelerate to try and get through that mud, but I certainly wasn't going fast, that's for sure. And it just amazed me that that van could be, do a 180 basically and be on its head. Now, I will say that what 
saved the whole situation was that Cruise Master DO 35 hitch. That's a 360 degree swivel hitch and the van just spun around on itself. We didn't feel it. We did not feel anything in the car. We looked out to our surprise to see the van turned over like that. So flipping it, getting it back was another issue. And what you didn't see on the video is that uh, uh, Mackay's, who was the driver of the other four wheel drive, was in front of us at that time. So he had to come back and somehow get around behind us. And that meant going through the bush again. And he ended up getting stuck, real well and truly stuck. So it took us about an hour to get him out of that position so he could come around to a position where he could we could hook up a winch line and try and pull the van over. So we did that, but there's great mounds of earth that you can you can see in that second little bit of video there uh, that he, he was behind, so it was a fair way away. Now, I'm disappointed I didn't take more video of the recovery, but I was pretty stressed at that point in time. I was really tired. Uh, and I've got to say, in, in all my years of driving, I've never had an accident like that at all, ever. In fact, I've never had an accident, touch wood. Um, so we managed to, to hook up a winch line and we rolled the van over on its side. But then the, where Mackay was parked with his, his vehicle was not the right angle to be able to then do the next flip to get it back on its wheels. So fortunately, uh, there was a, a tree in the right place and we hooked up a, uh, uh, a winch ring and diverted the rope basically off in the right angle to the tree and then back to, uh, to his uh, vehicle. And then what I was able to do is, as he started to pull it over, it got off onto one wheel, the other wheel was on the bank and I could then drive forward and pull the, the trailer back on to, uh, to both wheels. Now, amazingly, amazingly, there was very little damage to the trailer. Um, so we were able to drive home, uh, we'll drive back to Akarula, and we actually slept in it that night and for a few nights after that. So, uh, okay, the contents was turned upside down, so when we got back to Akarula, it was late at night, as you'll see, and and uh, we, uh, we spent a, an hour or two sort of sorting things out uh, before we went to bed. But uh, basically, there's some minor damage to the, to the trailer, so I've got I've to gotta give a big uh, uh, five-star rating to the strength of that uh, Australian off-road uh, Sierra camper van because to be able to tip it on its head, even if it was at very low speed, uh, and, you know, be sleeping in it four hours later, it was quite amazing. So anyway, we're back at Arkarula now, uh, and we're all safe, and uh, we've had quite an adventure for the day, so let's continue. Okay, back at Arkarula, we've had a bit of a sleep. Now to uh, get up, survey the damage, have a look at the car, have a look at the trailer and uh, spend a day here and rest I think. Let's just have a quick look at this car and trailer. Uh, is a Grenadier supposed to look like this? This will be a remarkable test for that uh, PPF. <laughs> it's still on there. Mackay and Ange. Yes. Okay, so these are the guys that travelled with us up that treacherous road. Yeah. It was a nightmare, wasn't it? Oh, God. We'll La never be doing that again. <laughs> and, uh, with only two cars up there. Yeah. Unfortunately. Right. There yeah. were two of us. Because That's right. Thank God we ran into you guys because yeah, I only do the outback in winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not in the wet. And that was that road should have been closed. It was yeah. treacherous. Oh, 100%. And we just couldn't get through in the end. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks so much, guys. And these guys helped us 
and we like we helped each other. But, exactly, yeah, it was mutual. But, but how was that drive back at night? No, no, around no the water, through the water, no, and the animals. And, no idea. <laughs> I didn't want to hit anything. That's for sure. Oh no, it was great. Anyway, we made it back safe and sound. Yes. So now we've got to go all the way back down to Broken Hill and across to get up to Queensland yes. again. Yeah. The so, way. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah, staying bitumen on the bitumen only. now. Okay, so we're packing up to leave finally. We've had a day's rest, we're going to head off, but uh, just to add to the excitement, just spotted a smoke sighting. So uh, I've alerted our Karula, and we're still in the caravan park, but uh, there's definitely a smoke sighting here, which is not desirable. to Mad Blue um, here at Lee Creek. 10 litres, $63. So a bit different from $1.80 a litre. Uh, but you've got to realise where you are in this thing. We've done uses a lot of Ad Blue when you're towing, I can tell you that. So be prepared. But anyway, we don't care. We've got fuel, we've got water, we've got air in the tyres, and we've got Ad Blue. So uh, we'll be on our on our way. We'll have to go all the way down past the Flinders Ranges down to Broken Hill and then when we get to Broken Hill we'll head across and back up to Queensland. It's a quite a detour but we're, we're, we're pretty happy we're back on the road and uh, you know we've, we've had a, we're having a great adventure there's no doubt about that. So it's a beautiful day here we've got beautiful scenery in front of us Everybody's content, everybody's happy, we had a good night's sleep, good night rest, we've got plenty of water, plenty of fuel, enough ad blue to get to Lee Creek. So we've just come through Cobar, we've travelled about a thousand kilometres today, and quite frankly, we're pretty tired, but we're going to try and make it to Burke. But do I feel after what we will have done, 13, 12, goodness me, seven or eight thousand kilometers I think on this trip. Do I feel that the, the Grenadier has been a tough vehicle that I can throw around and not worry about? And I'd have to say yes. Very interesting with this uh, rain that we've got now, the temperatures dropped significantly. It's been sitting at constantly at 38 all day and it's now suddenly dropped to 26 degrees Celsius, which I must say is a pleasant change. That's the golf course alright. Okay, so we're going to find somewhere to stay tonight, we're going to a motel. Oh, what the 
time is we went through three different time zones. Car says quarter to five, watch says I don't know, quarter past five or quarter to six. Anyway, it's early in the morning and uh, we're heading off. Look at that sky, it's quite amazing, really. Uh, long drive today, about uh, 1100 kilometers, but we're going to push home uh, because we're, uh, we're about ready to be home. Here we are, finally in St George. Well, well, five k's out of St George, but close enough. So the time now, 9:30. I believe we've got about seven and a half hours to go, but that's okay. Just take it easy. Well, we got home last night. <laughs> finally, big day. As I said, we've had a great trip. So there you are, that was our uh, family trip to the Flinders Range. It's quite, uh, quite an adventure. Uh, we all loved it in the end, and I know we had a bit of drama along the way, but we're all safe and well. So I'll look forward to letting you know uh, what's gone on since we've got home in the next video, and how the car and how the trailer is.